Welcome back to the GT Woodshop. Today I'm going to make this end grain chopping board in oak. Coming up after this. Welcome back. End grain chopping boards are really like making the board twice. You cut all the timber to size, glue it up, plane it down, sand it down, and then you cut it all up again. But the extra effort involved really is worth it. You get to see the end grain, which let's be honest, is far more interesting than the edge grain. Extra sanding required, the end grain's harder to sand, but, and in fear of sounding like a stuck record, it is worth it. So without further ado, let's crack on. I cut the oak down at the chop saw into far more manageable 750mm lengths. It's much easier to manage at this size and it also means I get far less wastage when planing it if there are any twists in the board. As the Capex chop saw always leaves such a beautiful finish, I usually take a sneak peek at the end grain and see what nature's provided us with. And this certainly looks like it's going to be a stunning board. Over at the planer, I start by planing one face of the timber until it's flat. I have to take multiple light passes as my planer is a little old and tired, but it gets the job done. With one face flat, I can then joint one edge of the timber square, keeping it pressed tight against the fence as I pass it over the cutter head. I pass the boards through the thicknesser until the flip side is completely flat and parallel with the face. I take multiple light passes here as well, not because the machine is old and tired, but because I like to reduce the stress on the machine and the chance of tear out on the boards. I thought at this point I'd show you this lovely picture of the end grain, mainly because I forgot to turn the camera on while I was cutting the boards down. I'm very sorry. Moving swiftly on, let's do the first glue up. I assemble the boards on the clamps, taking care to make sure each piece opposes the grain direction of the piece next to it. This helps to reduce any natural tendency the timber has to warp. I squeeze out a generous amount of glue onto each piece. I always think it's better to have a little bit of wastage than it is to have too little at this point. It's really important that the entire surface of each piece is completely covered in glue. If I've got to spread it too much, I feel it's not enough. Type Bond 3 is the perfect glue for this job. It's both food safe and waterproof, but it does go off a little quickly. So I must make haste. Without fail, I always forget to set the clamp in far enough so I can get the square in and check that everything is aligned. As the two bottom clamps are fully supporting the timber, I put two more clamps on top and press down hard so that I can keep the glue up nice and flat. Simple. 
I left the board in the clamps overnight just to make sure the glue has completely gone off. So it's now tomorrow. Time travel. I knock all the glue starts off and then it's off to the drum sander. I always set the head of the drum sander high to begin with and then slowly wind down during the first pass until I hear it make contact with the board. Then I set zero on the scale and wind down no more than 0.2 of a millimetre each pass. Once the board is flat, I can move across to the table saw and cut it into strips. I set the board on my Incra right angle jig, pushing it up firmly against the block clamped to the fence. This allows me to ensure each piece is cut to exactly the same size without a tape measure but also stops the pieces getting trapped between the fence and the blade once they're cut. Once the board becomes too small to safely hold on the right angle jig, I set the fence to the width of one of the pieces and finish the cuts. With the pieces all cut to size, I align them on the bench and remove any splinters left from the saw blade so they won't cause a gap on the next glue up. With the pieces all sanded, I place them on top of the clamps and align them for a best effect. Time for the second glue up. As before, a generous squeeze on each piece and then spread so each piece is completely covered. With the glue spread, I check to make sure everything is still square before applying the top clamp and tightening down. Ah oh well, back to work. I knock off the glue snorts and then it's back over to the drum sander again to make sure the board's flat.
When the board comes out of the drum sander, it's fairly well scored. So I start with 120 grit to get rid of those deep scratches. You can just about see them on the camera. After trimming the board down to size of the table saw, she continues to sand with 180 grit all over. Then it'll be time for a little damping. I give the board a generous damping on both sides. I'm just using ordinary tap water and one of those spray misters that you can buy for your tomatoes. And then, surprise, surprise, a little more sanding. Here's a fantastic shot of the chips flying out the bottom of the router because somebody forgot to plug in the dust extractor. Tut, tut. I put a 3mm roundover on the bottom of the board and a 6mm roundover on the top. I sand the freshly routed roundovers with 180 grit before giving the whole board a final sanding with 240. And as you can see in this picture, the board looks polished already and that's before the 240 grit. Last job before the big grain reveal, I put our brand on the bottom of the board. And now it's time for my favorite bit of the entire process. When you pour the oil on the board, the end grain just really pops and comes to life. It makes the whole process so worthwhile.
Well, here I am with the finished product ready to go out to the customer. And I hope you'll agree that the extra work involved in an end grain board is definitely worth it. The pattern that the grain makes is just stunning. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, then give us a thumbs up. And if you want to be alerted to future videos I release on this channel, then hit the subscribe button and tick on the little bell icon just beside it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.